This is not the refreshed Tesla Model S. It's a Formula One race car driven by a professional driver using yoke style steering. The yoke allows the driver to keep all of the hub mounted switches in the same place relative to each hand, even when making sharp turns. This is the prototype of the 1100 horsepower Plaid Plus Model S. It's set up like a race car driven by a professional driver using a standard steering wheel. It doesn't have any hub mounted switches related to racing at all. This particular lap set a record for a four door vehicle at Laguna Seca at 1 minute 30.3 seconds, which was only three seconds behind the overall production record set by the McLaren Senna. This is the render of the refreshed Model S showing a Formula One style yoke in place of the standard wheel that has already proven itself to be quite capable on a racetrack. You can see that there are indeed hub mounted controls such as turn signals, windshield wipers, high beams, and even apparently the horn. All of these controls are currently split onto two stalks in the Model 3 and Y, which is where most people thought Tesla would aim for its refresh. But Tesla dropped the stalks all together for the new Model S and X. I think it makes the most sense to evaluate the yoke style controls shown in the render car in two steps. This video is going to focus on the yoke as a steering interface. I'm going to address the hub mounted controls replacing the stalks in a separate video. I know the yoke looks cool and is different in an edgy way that might make you feel like you're driving a race car, but that doesn't matter to me if it makes driving worse. In order to get a literal feel for what driving with a yoke would be like, I spent nearly a week using just the hand positions that would be available to me on a yoke. This brings me to an important point. A standard wheel allows you to drive like you have a yoke if that's what you want to do. But a yoke will never allow you to drive like a standard wheel no matter what your preference is. That alone seems to be a substantial argument against a yoke being better for the driver than a wheel. The problem I ran into was that I would still find myself instinctively using the whole wheel to drive, so I decided to wrap the top of the wheel with barbed wire. Well, fake barbed wire we use as part of our haunted trail that we put on as a fundraiser each year. It's not going to hurt me or the car, but it is an instant reminder not to slide my hands past the point where I could grab if I were using a yoke. A common comment in support of the yoke and the new Model S and X is that Tesla is just preparing us for a fully autonomous future. <laughs> but the reality is we are very far from having reliable, safe, and legal hands-free driving in a Tesla. We are, we're years and years away from that. And in the meantime, whatever Tesla puts here, whether it's a conventional wheel like this or a yoke like is pictured in the renders of the Model S and X refresh, you're gonna need to use it to actually drive the car when autopilot is incapable of doing it, when you aren't comfortable with autopilot's capabilities in a certain situation, and Tesla's still using the wheel as a driver monitoring system to make sure that you are attentive as the driver. You always have to put a little bit of torque on the wheel, otherwise autopilot shuts down. It'll alert and things like that, but eventually it'll turn off, but yes, there is an in-cabin camera in the Model 3 and Y, and an in-cabin camera will be coming to the S and the X. But it seems that the camera that's in the 3 and the Y at least is not capable of the kinds of attentiveness monitoring that the very specialized camera in, say, GMs for their Super Cruise can do. It can see through sunglasses. It can measure very minute changes in where your pupils are pointing and in how and how open your eyelids are and i read someone credible on reddit pointing out that the camera up here isn't capable of doing those things it's not like there's a software switch that tesla can throw and then it's hands-free with the camera doing all the driver attentiveness monitoring they might try to do that, but it's just not gonna be as effective as a camera sitting right here that's specialized for doing exactly that. So you're still gonna to have to hold on. You're still gonna to have to provide a minimum amount of torque, but not so much that it kicks it out of auto steer. 
So one of the questions that I've been trying to answer is, does a yoke make that easier? Does a yoke make holding on while it's on autopilot, providing just enough torque for autopilot to sense that you're attentive, but not so much torque that it kicks it out of auto steer easier? And the short answer is no, it doesn't make it easier at all. It's a little harder, in fact, without all this stuff here, my typical place to hold onto the wheel is right about here because I can fully relax my arm and have just enough tension in my hand to hang on to the wheel. And I'm providing exactly the amount of torque that autopilot needs to sense that I'm an attentive driver and stay in auto steer without any kind of warnings, but not so much that it kicks out of auto steer. But when I'm over here, I have to support my arm's weight with muscular tension to keep it from pulling <laughs> out of auto steer like that. If I fully relax my arm, it kicks out of auto steer. So it's not easier. So the second question is, does holding here instead of here make things better for you as a driver? And I don't see that either. For two and a half years almost, I've been driving with my hand up here with no problems whatsoever, sensing auto steer doing something I don't want it to do, and actually resisting the movement altogether before I even realized that I resisted it. It's very similar to pulling your hand off of a hot burner. You touch a hot burner and you just pull your hand away and then you feel that, oh, that was hot. That's why I automatically pulled my hand away. It's more accurately just like if you had something in your hand and someone surprised you by trying to snatch it out of your hand. You're going to resist and you might even try to pull back, but you'll grip tighter without even thinking about it. And that's what happens when my hand is up here or up here and auto steer tries to steer in a direction that I don't think is safe or natural. I just simply resist kicking it out of auto steer and I didn't even realize that I did it until it's already done. So when it comes to that aspect of using a steering wheel, I'm completely unconvinced that a yoke is going to make my life better as a means of measuring my attentiveness as a driver than a wheel. Because this is extremely effective at monitoring auto steer and being able to safely disengage it before it can get the car into trouble. I can also do it here, but it takes a lot more muscular effort. Now I've been driving this way for days and it's not like my arms are falling off. but my arm is definitely more tired after a day of driving here and here than driving here and here. But let's say for a minute that Tesla achieves enough competence with its autonomy that it can go to hands free. There will still be a transitional period, probably measured in years, where a driver is still going to have to intervene when autopilot makes an erroneous decision. And here's the rub. When there is a wheel in front of you and your hands are off the wheel and you need to grab onto the wheel to stop it from turning some direction you don't want it to, the orientation of the wheel doesn't matter. You just reach out and grab wherever your hands are and you're going to grab onto wheel and you're going to have instant control over the car and your hands are going to instinctively turn the direction that you need them to turn with no more drama than is already being created by the situation itself. With a yoke, all of a sudden, <laughs> Your ability to grab onto a moving object comes into play because you're only going to be able to grab here and here. There's nothing to grab up here. 
And so whatever the wheel is doing, if you want to take control in an instant, you have to already align your hands with the size of the yoke. Now, it's not that fully dramatic like in some yokes on race cars because there is a bottom to it and it's not like you can't grab at all like something like this but that's not going to be nearly as effective as grabbing a wheel like this of course when it's turned to the side I'm not going to turn the wheel a direction I don't want to go right now but you get the point so when it comes to, oh, see, that's a situation right there where because my hand was already on the steering wheel and I had a grip on it, I was able to keep it from turning into that other lane. The reaction was instant. But a perfect example of how in an instant, auto steer can end up sending you in a direction that might not be safe and you need to be able to react like that. And so that raises the question again, is a wheel or a yoke better when you're on autopilot? And to me, I just don't see a yoke making what I need to be able to do better when I'm on autopilot. I don't see a yoke making use of autopilot safer in any way. I don't see it more convenient in any way. And I see it as more tiring than using a wheel. So I don't get it. I don't get the arguments for a yoke being better than a wheel when you're using autopilot and you have your hand on the wheel as a form of driver monitoring as well as preserving your ability to take over in an instant. I don't see how a yoke is better than a wheel when you're in a hands-free mode and you need to take over. I don't see how a yoke is easier than a wheel in that situation. I don't see how a yoke is safer than a wheel in that situation. So I'm still left scratching my head. Why is a yoke better than a wheel? So the last thing it comes down to is when you as a driver are fully in control of the car. But the only time I'm driving with two hands like this are in the scenarios where autopilot has the easiest time with it. I've got no issues right now driving as if I were driving using a yoke. But autopilot would have no issues driving right now either. I would absolutely be in autopilot right now except for the fact that I'm trying to prove a point. And then you get to things like making turns with a yoke. Uh, that is not comfortable for me. There's an actual airbag here. So in order to be safe with an airbag, you need to be a certain distance away. You don't want to be super close. If you look at a race car driver, even one using a wheel, you'll see that they sit much closer to the wheel or the yoke. Their arms will be like this. You might even see that their knees are up high because they're so close to the controls, much more so than anybody would rightfully feel comfortable driving just in general. But you need to be close enough so your elbows are bent so that as you turn a wheel or a yoke, maintaining a grip like this, you're not twisting your shoulders in a super awkward way like I need to do in order to make this turn without letting go. So I'm not making a claim that a yoke would make the Model S and the X undrivable, but I am making the claim that it's not going to make it easier. That I think the reason that it is appearing in the Model S and the Model X is simply for aesthetics, and that is it. It's simply for kind of the LARPing of being a race car driver in your super fast Model S and Model X. I'm not a LARPer when it comes to stuff like that. I would never put a yoke steering wheel in this Model 3, even if it were given to me for free. That to me is about like putting a hood scoop on the front of, of any vehicle, even worse if you were to do 
a Model 3. It's like it's like putting exhaust tips on an EV. I've not been in a single situation, and I've been driving like this for probably five days now, and I haven't been in a single situation where I felt that, oh my gosh, having my hand stuck in this position is better than the way I would ordinarily drive with a wheel in front of me. So some have suggested that Tesla could offer variable ratio steering. I actually have that in my 2004 Lexus LX 470. It's not a big variation in the ratio, but it's not a software thing. There's actually a pretty convoluted piece of hardware that allows the ratio to change based upon the speed. The idea is that you have a very fast steering ratio when the speeds are slow and you're much more likely to need a lot of steering of the tires to make a turn. And then when you're at highway speeds, the steering ratio slows down so that you're not as fatigued trying to keep the wheel perfectly straight. The faster you're going, the faster you're going to move away from your center line of travel with any given degree of deviation from straight with the wheel. So it's going to be very fatiguing to have a steering ratio faster than this on the highway when a human is driving. But the problem is a lot of people talk about variable ratio steering as if it's just a software switch. They're conflating steering ratio and steering assist. Steering assist is a software thing. You put the motors in there, in this case, to assist the driver in turning the wheels, and you can use software to jack up that assistance or, or lessen it, and it could be speed variable power assist in the steering. That's easy. The hardware's already there. It probably already happens. But variable ratio requires hardware. It requires a special kind of gearing and parts that move to vary that ratio. You can't just add more software to the Model 3 that I'm driving right now and change the steering ratio. It is fixed and it always will be. So unless Tesla's already working on a hardware solution to provide that variable ratio, they're not going to have it and they haven't mentioned it. It's not in anything that they've promoted. In short, I remain quite skeptical about the yoke Tesla plans for the refreshed Model S and X. I don't see how it will make anything better for the driver, and I think it's gonna make a few things worse. Tesla could just as easily offer the exact same shape of the current yoke with an arc bridging over the top like a standard wheel, and that would give drivers a choice of how to use it without potentially introducing pain points or even safety issues that might come with just a yoke. The yoke is actually the only part of the refresh that I don't like. The rest of the features Tesla changed or added, plus the insane jump in performance makes me giddy for the new S and X. If you're interested in getting a Tesla of your very own, be sure to use my Tesla owner's referral link when you do. It will get you free supercharging. Full details on a Tesla owner's referral program can be found at the link itself. Be sure to subscribe for more discussions on the refreshed Model S and X. I really appreciate you watching the Tech of Tech, and I hope to see you next time.